Welcome to another episode of FBTV, and today we have with us our Grandmaster, most worshipful brother, Richard Elkington. Hello, Richard. Hello, Ash, and hello to the uh, members out there. Isn't that a fantastic institution we are part of? Well, my, just... my, my enthusiasm is undiminished, undiminished. Would you believe that? <laughs> I do believe it, because I had the excitement of getting back to Lodge this week, and uh, we had our meeting on July the 1st, the first available day. Uh, under the, uh, the reopening after lockdown, mm -hmm. we, we had a great night. We had a, a double first. We had the obligation of the master elect. We had uh, four candidates in the south with us. Really? Um, just tick all the boxes. That's great. Yeah. So there were some presentations. We got an installation ahead of us. Uh, so if that's an example of what's happening in Freemasonry around Victoria, uh, we're doing terrifically. Well, before we went back into the was it lockdown number four, I was astonished at the level of enthusiasm and activity that was occurring in lodges, just like you had last night. You know, yeah. Candidates, prospective candidates coming to meetings, uh, lots of presentations, lots of sort of genuine enthusiasm for our institution. Richard, I wonder today if we might be able to talk about lots of little things, uh, some good positives happening right around the state. Um, it's just gone into July, a new financial year, and we've ended the previous year with a very modest surplus. Yes, which I guess surprised most of us that we actually finished up with a, uh, a pretty good result considering the circumstances for most of the 2021 financial year. We're in lockdown, there was sort of capitation fee relief, uh, um, you know, many buildings weren't occupied. Uh, we had empty space in a lot of them, in, you know, in the Freemasons of Victoria, large Masonic centres in Melbourne. And really by, the, by dint of the fact we, uh, our spending is down and by prudent financial management by the Finance Committee under Larry Jackson and by our Grand Treasurer, we've managed to finish the year with an excellent result. So, Richard, this sets us up to uh, have a good year ahead. I, I understand that there's some uh, extra monies being provided for minor works and major works at Masonic centres around the state. Absolutely. I mean, this is not unusual, but we've uh, recently empowered the Property and Works Committee to, uh, with, with a delegated authority to spend up to $15,000 on each particular case for remedial works associated with Masonic centres and to actually roll that money out essentially as soon as it's needed, so not waiting months for approval. And so what we're seeing is the uh, is essential works being carried out in Masonic centres, not only to, not only to uh, you know, cover the essential works to provide health and safety, but also for the comfort uh, of um, members and their visitors. Yeah. Uh, now, across Victoria, uh, we have good numbers uh, with membership as well. Uh, Paul Brennan and his team uh, appear to be on target. Well, I can't, you know, as you know, Ash, I'm not very good on numbers, but I do understand it's something like 200 new members introduced to Freemasonry, uh, well, essentially since March this year. Um, we managed to, be, managed to be able to get some members to return. We have a get Get Back team uh, under Wayne Millard. Uh, our membership VAT is very enthusiastic. Uh, it's developed a, a, I think it's called geo specific recruitment process, which we can apply in sort of every area, region, city across uh, across Victoria. And so I think there's, I think there's, and there should be a high degree of optimism about the future so rather than simply sitting back and watching the numbers fall and then getting into trouble with management of masonic centers because we haven't got enough revenue to cover maintenance that we can actually see the numbers turning around because we've been arguing for years as members well why don't people come and join us because we're a great organization yeah now we're out there on the front foot saying we're, we're a great organization this is what we stand for these are our principles this is what we can offer you Come and join us. One of the aspects about Masonic centres that you've introduced is the concept of business development, where we see 
extra opportunities. Could you tell, tell us a little bit about uh, what you see as being possible? Well, that, that volunteer action team was established to overcome that very issue of numbers declining in Masonic centres, therefore not sufficient fees and charges being levied to cover essential maintenance, and then Freemasons Victoria having to actually assist lodges with doing that. Now, what we'd actually like to see philosophically is that we can generate revenue with our Masonic centres. I mean, just take the one I'm closely associated with in Terelgan. It has a probably 50 car space car park. It has a brand new building, brand new south. Yeah, it's probably only used 10 hours a week. So the other, so we've got single purpose Masonic centres all over the place. The purpose of a business development team is, is to actually realise additional revenue opportunities so that we can uh, enjoy our Freemasonry and attend to the maintenance needs and the, I guess, the, the, the capitation and other fee needs of our lodge. So utilising the spaces we've got much better to reduce the costs. Richard, uh, one of the things that uh, you're looking at in, in cutting red tape, which you hate, uh, is perhaps uh, cutting some uh, or introducing oh. some more dispensations. Could you explain what you might have in mind? The Grant Secretary, the district coordinators, the office staff uh, and myself have been looking at what absolutely has to be retained in the centre, in head office, and what's more properly administered by either the district coordinator or by the lodge itself. So if we've been through all of the dispensations that are listed in the constitution and we've pres resolved to keep very few, very few under my dispensation and the majority now will go to either district coordinators or to lodges. Um, so I'm actually living the principle since that I enunciated when I was chosen for this position is to get Grand Lodge or head office out of the face of the membership. Stop telling, start asking, start empowering. And so I'm absolutely committed to doing that. And that ought to be, uh, those dispensations will be confirmed at the next meeting of district coordinators, which I think is on the 12th of July. And uh, we'll take it from there. So that, that will be publicised. I'm absolutely dedicated to cutting out this uh, head office decision-making mentality. You spoke of uh, July the 12th. That's also the date for the next quarterly communication. Uh, what's going to happen there? Well, it's going to be an interesting meeting, actually. I think when we, uh, when we went into caretaker mode with the Masonic Governing Council, we did, so, we did forecast that there would be a need for uh, perhaps special courtly communications or special meetings at Grand Lodge. So what's expected to occur on the 12th of July is that the chairman of the Change Management Steering Committee will put, put forward a proposition for interim government governance arrangements for the craft. That is interim being essentially 12 months. So what we put, we'd say, you put forward a proposition around essentially separating the commercial and Masonic functions of Freemasons Victoria, separate, constructing, constructing separate boards, both of those boards having elected members. I think it's important, like the clear message we're getting is, whilst the Ethics Centre recommended totally independent directors on a commercial board, I think the reality is our members would feel some discomfort with that. So what we're proposing is a mixture of independent directors and Masonic directors. So there'll be a more detailed proposition presented to that quarterly by, the, by Robert Brennand to sit on the table essentially for a month and then hold another 
meeting of Grand Lodge in August to debate that, that issue as a single item of business. So that would and be a special meeting, an extra meeting? Of Grand Lodge, yeah, in, in the, probably the second week of August, so that we can get some sanction, if you like, for moving forward in, a t in temporary organisational arrangements, essentially to get us out of caretaker and restore member-elected board members or directors to the various elements of our organisation. Richard, that sounds like a whole lot of positive things are happening simultaneously. Well, they are. At the same time, that's happening, of course. There's lots of work being done and lots of thought being put into what a new constitution would look like. And the point I keep stressing everywhere I go is you know, we have an, an historic opportunity to build an organisation, a fraternity, a, a group of men dedicated to supervising, you know, to, to living our principles. We have an opportunity to build that almost from scratch if we, if we choose to do so. So let's take advantage of that opportunity to, to create not a version of the past necessarily, not just instituting the same thing, but some, some organisation and fraternity which meets our needs, that is the needs and the aspirations of the existing membership. So let's not lose that opportunity. That sounds wonderfully encouraging and probably a good point on which to finish this, uh, this edition of uh, FV TV. We've been speaking with our Grand Master, Richard Elkington. Thank you very much for your time, Richard. Thank you. I, mean, I, I always enjoy doing this. In fact, I probably just like talking too much. <laughs> <laughs>